Hi everyone, this is Tuplex, and in this video I am going to explain how I make YouTube videos and how I process them for uploading to YouTube. Um, I wouldn't say that I get tons of questions about it, but I do get them fairly frequently, um, asking you know what software I use, um, you know how I how I do my editing and things like that. So. Um, I thought I would make this video to explain it to anyone who's interested, and uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to try out my settings and things, feel free. Um, so, uh, as a to get started, I guess uh, the software I use for recording, um, and this is what I'm using right now to record this video that you see, is uh, OBS. It's uh, free software. It's used by lots of people for doing this sort of thing. So um, I recommend it. It works well. Uh, it's very powerful. You can do a lot with it. Now, I will say that uh, I've been doing this for four years, uh, making these videos. And over the course of that time, I have been striving to, uh, to simplify my workflow as much as possible because I enjoy playing the games and I enjoy talking about the games and I enjoy interacting with the community, but I am not uh, the kind of person that loves sitting down and editing videos. It's, uh, I, I really enjoy uh, well edited videos, um, you know, by some other YouTuber, other YouTubers that I watch. Um, but uh, that's not something that I wanna spend a lot of time doing. So I have streamlined my process down to a very basic setup and a very basic workflow. But um, to begin with, I will show you my, my recording settings in OBS. So if we go to output, um, I record in 1440p. Okay, so, and I'm recording in uh, native resolution. So I go to, um, and this is an adv advanced output mode. So I, I put everything into a captures folder on a separate hard drive. Uh, I have three drives on my system. Um, my, and they're all SSDs. So I have a C drive that obviously runs Windows and basic software like OBS, for example. <clears throat> um, I have a drive, uh, a one terabyte SSD where I capture video while I'm recording, and then I have a third SSD, which is also a terabyte, and that is where all my games are installed. So my Steam folder and everything is on that third drive. So that way, when I'm playing and recording, uh, Windows is running on its own drive, recording is going onto its own drive, and my games are running on their own drive, so that I have plenty of throughput for all those things to happen at the same time. Um, so anyway, uh, I send my output there. Um, I record two audio tracks, which I'll get to in a minute. I'm using the NVENC H.264 encoder, the new version. I don't rescale, so I'm recording in 1440p. I let YouTube take care of the scaling for me after I upload. Uh, constant bit rate, CBR rate control, 45,000 kilobps bit rate. Um, keyframe interval zero, okay. Preset quality, profile main, uh, two max B frames. I don't even know what most of that means, but uh, I did research on the web. I found, uh, I found some good articles and videos where people talk about their settings. I experimented with a few until I found one that I like. Um, the really important one here is constant bit rate and and the actual bit rate that you choose. Now, if you're running 1080p, which a lot of people do, um, you know, for example, you know, and I'm doing 1440 because I have 27 inch monitors, but um, I think most, uh, you know, most monitors in the 20 to 24 inch range are gonna be 1080p. Now, if you do that, you can get by with a lower bit rate, but um, you know, maybe something like 30,000 would be good, but I would just experiment with bit rate. You wanted to get it, you wanna get it as high as you can while not hurting the performance of your system. If you run it too high, then you get to the point where you can't capture the video fast enough and then you start getting stuttering in your output um, and it's terrible. So 
45 is what works for me um, for 1440p at 60 FPS. All right, and then audio, everything there is just default on that tab. Uh, for my for the audio itself, um, I'm using a, a Focusrite uh, interface for my microphone. Uh, so yeah, nothing, I think there's really nothing else there to see. Uh, it's the recording output that's the important part for that. Okay, so let me get rid of the OBS window. There we go. So once my video is captured, um, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro, and I know the text is small and probably hard to read. Um, if there's anything that you need to see here that for some reason you can't see on your screen, uh, even if you make it f make the video full screen or whatever, just let me know and I'll try to, uh, I can let you know in the comments or whatever. But I come down here to Media Browser, I take my last capture, which uh, in this case, this file is the one that I'm currently capturing. So I'm going to take the previous one, which is a Factorio video that I just made. And I right click and import it. And then once I have it imported, I just drag it over to the timeline. And now I can see my video. Uh, like I said, I record two audio tracks. Um, the first one is the game audio. And my voice is going to its own track. All right, so the first thing I do is I select the whole sequence and I go to unlink here. Um, that way I can, that'll allow me to process these audio tracks separately. I don't really do anything with the video. Um, I hit record. As long as I don't make any major mistakes or get any interruptions from the outside world, I just hit record, I do the whole thing, and then I stop recording, and that's it. I don't do any cuts or anything like that, unless I have a specific reason to do so. Okay, so most of my videos are just one take, beginning to end, no editing on the video side. Now for the audio, um, I start with my, with my voice track, which is the second one. Um, and then I have the essential sound panel turned on and I assign that the dialogue audio type. And then I have a preset that I use. Uh, it says Eric's vocals because Eric is a guy that lives here. Um, <clears throat> and I, for my voice, uh, again, uh, this took some experimentation to find out, to find out what works well with my voice. Everybody's voice is different. Um, everybody's voice emphasizes different frequencies. And so your settings might need to be different than my settings to get your voice to sound good. Or maybe your voice sounds amazing already and you don't need to do any of this. But um, I do loudness, I do repair, I do clarity. Uh, I have dynamics checked, which is kind of like compression. Um, but it's fairly light, I have it set to three. Uh, and then I do EQ with the podcast voice and the amount is set at five and that's it. So I set that preset and um, that's how I process my voice. Now, uh, the other thing that I want to add, like I said, I've been doing this for a little over four years now and I've practiced uh, over thousands and thousands of hours uh, speaking into a microphone clearly and evenly so that I don't require a lot of compression or level adjustment in the finished product. So uh, if you are, you know, if you are new at doing YouTube or, or you know, um, or streams or something like that, I would say that one skill that you should work on is uh, working with your microphone. Um, First of all, buying a good microphone is the single best thing that you can do to improve your sound. The second thing would be learning how to use it, which is um, finding out what is the right distance between your mouth and the microphone, being able to speak in a level, at a level volume uh, most of the time. Now, you do want to be able to express emotion, so sometimes you want to talk softly, 
sometimes you want to speak more loudly when things are excited, but generally you want to have, you know, your, your home base volume that you stick to most of the time. Um, maintain your distance to the mic and that will, that will give you a very clean audio track to work with in the beginning. Um, and, and I think that having a good microphone and good voice control and, uh, uh, and using your mic well is probably a lot more important than any sort of post-processing that you're going to do on your vocal track. <clears throat> and also learn to turn away from the mic when you have to clear your throat. Okay, so I apply that preset to my vocal track, and then I right-click on it, I go to Audio Gain, and I go to Normalize Max Peak to minus 3 dB. And I click OK. Now in this case, uh, it was done almost instantly because uh, this video was only about 42 minutes long. Um, I find that uh, if my video is close to or more than an hour or so, it takes Premiere Pro a lot longer to do that calculation. And I also have a fairly shiny new computer with a very fast multi-core processor. Um, on my old machine, this would take a lot longer to do, but in this case, it was practically instantaneous. So, yay, computer. All right, so after that, I go to my, uh, to my game audio track, and in this case, I really do very little with it. All I do is I set audio gain on that one to minus 21 dB. And again, um, that takes some experimentation but I found that that gave the right mix between my vocal track and the game audio such that the game audio um, can always be heard even when I'm talking, but it's not distracting or getting in the way of my voice. Uh, now, I mentioned before about how I've streamlined my process over time. There was a time where I would export my audio tracks into Adobe Audition and I would apply uh, compression, uh, compression and limiting and I would put, I would put ducking on the, on the game audio and all that stuff. But it just it took a lot of time. You know, just, just exporting the tracks into Audition took, you know, sometimes a couple of minutes and then you work with it in there and then you have to import it back in. That took another couple minutes sometimes. And then you also have, you know, every time you do that, it creates a gazillion files on your drives. Uh, you know, and with Adobe, who knows where all those folders and files are going, <laughs> you know, they're all over the system. So, um, so I stopped doing that and I, I'm, I just wanted to start to do all of my processing within Premiere Pro just to make it simple. So like I said, it, it's very simple what I'm doing here, and but it works. It works pretty well, I think. All right, so after that's done, um, I select my three tracks again, which is the video plus the two audio tracks, and I link them together again. I press link. And then while it's selected, I press Shift-D, which applies default transitions. Apply default transitions to selection. And what those default transitions are is it applies fade in and fade out on the video, right? Fades in at the beginning, fades out at the end. And it also does a, a volume uh, fade up and fade out on the audio tracks. So that way when I press play, Hi everyone, this is two. It comes in like that. And then at the end, I'll be able to make rocket fuel. I'll be able to make so I don't no spoilers, but it fades out at the end. Just take my word for it. Okay. And then the last thing I do, um, I zoom in on the timeline here and I shift it over a little bit because I need to make a little room at the beginning for my little, uh, my little intro video. So I import that. I drag that over. That's already been processed and mixed and everything else. I don't need to do anything with that. Go back to the beginning and then I'm done. Hi everyone, this is two. Okay. So that's it for editing. 
Um, and when I'm focused, usually I'm, I'm watching YouTube or something while I do all this, but if I'm focused, I can get this done in, in just a couple of minutes. Okay, now from here, um, I hit Control M, uh, which allows me to export. Okay, now I'll go over my export settings. Uh, so I have a preset for that as well. Again, I'm, I'm using the preset that this guy named Eric made. Um, so I just have this called YouTube 1440p high definition. Um, and let me, let me go over the settings here. Let's see if I can expand this. Yeah, there's a lot of settings here, so, um, but I'll, I'll show you what they are. So on the basic video, uh, again, I'm not doing any scaling. Um, I'm just outputting at the same resolution that I recorded at. I have render at maximum depth set, uh, for encoding settings. I'm using high profile level 5.1. None of the options are selected. Uh, for bitrate settings, I'm doing VBR one pass. Uh, and then I have target bitrate of 24 megabits per second and maximum bitrate 24 megabits per second. So this essentially, this essentially means that I'm going to encode at 24 megabits per second all the time unless it needs to slow it down for some reason, but it'll never go above that. And for 1440p on YouTube, I think it looks fantastic. Um, so that's it on the video. Uh, down here, I have use maximum render quality checked. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, for audio, I don't think I changed anything on audio. I've got a 48 kilohertz sample rate, AAC. Whoops, I think I just accidentally changed something. Yeah, I did. Let me reload my preset. Okay, stereo. Audio quality high, bit rate is 320. Um, yeah, and then the rest of it is I haven't touched. So those are my output settings. And then I'll cue this. I'll press Q instead of export. If you export, it'll run it within Adobe Premiere Pro, and then you have to leave Adobe Premiere Pro running until it's done. But what I do is I I use the Q option, so it goes into Adobe Media Encoder, and then, and then at that point I can close Premiere Pro and do whatever I want. <clears throat> and then you just hit the play button and wait a couple hours for it to encode your video. And then from there it's ready to upload. So, I hope I've covered everything. That's it. Uh, that's that's how I make the videos. That's how I edit the videos, and that is how I process the videos before they get uploaded onto YouTube. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you found this useful, um, you can consider supporting me. I'll have some links in the video. Otherwise, uh, best of luck, and I'll talk to you all soon.